Welcome back, everyone, to the XHL. We are diving straight into this matchup, Baltimore against Brooklyn. No frills, no introduction needed, guys. These are one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference of the XHL. So might as well just get right into the game action. we got a power play early on here for Baltimore. That's going to be Michael Misa from Brooklyn getting the tripping call. So the Biscuits get in early with a power play. Here's Lambert with a shot on Borhoff, one of the best goaltenders in the XHL, making a nice blocker, stick save, and a beauty. But Ty Delandria, once the Dragons get back on even strength, Liam Carter, the other custom goaltender, can't make a save, and that's going to be a goal. So Brooklyn's up 1-0, and then again on the other side, Borhoff making some nice saves, and it's still 1-0 here at the end of the first period. So far, so good here for the goaltenders. You thought heading into this matchup that both of the offenses were going to come out, but goalies have been the name of the game here. Lambert with a move on Borhoff. A couple nice saves back to back. Nice passing all the way around for Baltimore. And that's going to be the first goal for the Biscuits. That is Danny Burke with his 13th goal on the season, beating Borhoff. Blocker side. One time shot. Borhoff stands tall with a nice save. So he's getting, he's been getting peppered here. Brooklyn kind of living on their own side of the ice. So they got to get more pressure on Liam Carter. But unfortunately here for the Dragons, they're going to give up a really, really beautiful setup. Beautiful goal there for Evan Rodriguez. And we'll take a look at the GG9 replay. Look at the passing here from Moon right in front of Borhoff. And he's got, he can't do anything. He's got nothing. But we got a turnover here. That's Burke. He's on a breakaway. Borhoff got to stand tall. Some nice moves. But Borhoff does stand tall. And again, more shots on Borhoff. He has been just, again, he's just been peppered. Now here comes Zilberman with a pass. And we've got a shot from Broadway. And this one's going to kick back out to Aston Reese. And a little bit of puck luck there for Brooklyn as they tie it up 2-2. Two two. Now inside the trapezoid, behind the net, no one is covering Lambert as he just comes straight into the slot and fires this thing in for the goal. So that is Emmett Lambert's 10th on the season. We'll get a little GG9 replay here again and take a look at where Zilberman is playing here. Number eight. I mean, he's he's back checking a little bit, like he's back skating and he's not even looking to see where his assignment is coming from. So that's just, it's just poor defensive job right there by Zilberman. Danny Burke will get another goal. And again, Baltimore with the nice passing, they're able to take down one of the top seeds, if not the top seed, in the Eastern Conference and the Brooklyn Dragons. On the road, no less. I mean, that's a, just a beautiful setup there and just a beautiful goal. So 4-2 to two is your final score. Baltimore will beat Brooklyn. And if you look at the numbers there on the other side, Brooklyn out hit them. Shots were about the same. It was a fairly close game, but I think what the differentiator was, was Liam Carter was just a little bit better. That's not really a knock on Robert Borhoff. I mean, he did face less shots, believe it or not. Liam Carter actually had more shots against him than Borhoff did. Look at this. He had 24 shots against him. He gave up four. He only made 20 saves. So whether that was a fatigue thing, possibly. But, you know, if you're Borhoff and that's your sample size, you got to be a little bit better in gameplay. He's a he's a sim monster. So maybe this is just something that's going to pop up and creep its ugly head every now and then. Borhoff might be not a gameplay goalie. But we'll see how it all plans out here. We've got Kansas City, Dakota. Very tough matchup between both teams here in the Central Division out there on the west side. But Matthew Perot going to get on the board here. one nothing for Kansas City. The hometown fans love it. Dakota has been getting a, some a little bit of hate in the comment section I've noticed is Joe Casimir scores his 29th goal and it was, that one was right in front he had the close quarters activated right there with his superstar here's Alexi with the shot and a beautiful save by Babich another beautiful save there and Kansas City still maintaining possession of the puck here moving on in and a great job defensively by Dakota now what's interesting about this matchup here in the central is both teams have kind of different identities. You've got a really nice offense from Kansas City and really good def defense by the Demons. So they got DDD, Dakota Demons defense. Here's Alexi with a nice move and then Persona moving in, passes it to Alexi. And somehow, I don't think Babich, like, I don't think he either saw it or he just didn't react quick enough because Alexi with the backhand, very, very short window to the net here. But it all started with the move. Personen here with the pass, and I mean, that's just a beautiful goal by Alexiev off the backhand, and 
Kansas City finds themselves up 2-1. Now, we're going to jump all the way to the final seconds of this hockey game. And we've got Dakota trying to put some pressure on KC. And they need one more goal. They've got the extra attacker out. But Kansas City is going to have to find a way here. They're not known as a defensive team. They've only given up one goal here tonight. But they've got to find a way to get this thing out of their zone. Dakota's got some big bodies up there. They're going to put pressure on them for sure. Personan's got a wide open look at the empty net. But they're going to make a change. Get that sixth man out again. And Alexi with the wide open net. Look. He's going to put this thing on ice. 3-1 to one will be your final score. And give some credit where credit's due, man. Kansas City does not have as good of a record as Dakota. And they beat them pretty soundly here, 3-1. to one. That's a good win at home. Yes, do you count the empty net goal? Maybe not, but 2-1 to one, pretty much <laughs> until the final seconds of that empty goal. But you look at the numbers there. 20 hits for Dakota. 9 face-offs won. That's going to come down again to the to the ability of your offensive players, right? So if you have a more talented center, you can win those faceoffs, give your team extra opportunities. That might that might have been the that might have been the factor of why Kansas City was able to pull this one out. So something to look into for Dakota, but they outshot them, they outhit them, and still Kansas City still found a way to get it done. Brodeur was good, the custom goaltender. Brodeur was good. Only one goal given up against that Dakota team. So Tampa Bay and Charleston. We got another East matchup here. We had Brooklyn and Baltimore to start us off. And now we've got the Rampage against the Sun Mutts. Two of my favorite uniforms, I think, in this XHL. I got a lot of favorites because, of course, I made them. But we got a little squeaker going right past Dirk Davenport, the custom goaltender. We've got Rhino Power, the best player on the Rampage, getting his first goal of the game here. And Fedoro going to respond. Nice job right there by the Sun Mutts to get a response goal. But the one thing with Charleston, they need to get some production offensively. They, they're actually one of the worst teams in the XHL as far as custom teams go. I mean, they're, they're about a 500 record at this point, and they're going to need a little bit more effort from their defense help their goaltender out guys it's Finch it's Keegan Finch and he's just getting peppered at this point but he's making some nice saves here still two to two we saw that breakaway that he had to move left and right left and right left and right he had a little twitch going on it was a really nice save and again he's just getting peppered at this point here by the Sun Mutts we've got another attempt here by Tampa Bay that is Brandon Sutter here with the goal it is now three to two and that my friends is probably going to do it unless Charleston can find a way to get a goal here with the empty net. They've got the extra attacker, and they're not going to be able to as they look like they only had like one attempt there. One really good attempt. They almost beat Davenport up top, glove side, but it just couldn't stay on target. And the final score will be 3-2. to two. So Tampa Bay gets a nice win here over Charleston on the road. And if you take a look at that box score there, fairly even all across all the way, but... What's interesting is Tampa Bay had eight minutes in the sin bin. So how Charleston did not capitalize on any of that is kind of concerning. So we got to look into that if you're a Charleston fan, especially when you're going into free agency or going into the draft. Like what players are you going to acquire to kind of help you out there at that at that aspect of the game? So box score time. We got Keegan Finch. I thought he was solid for the amount of shots that he faced, 26 Came in against him, and he made 23 saves. So it's not a bad performance, but it, I think when you're living on that side of the ice, I think you're going to get in trouble. You're just asking for it. But take a look here, guys. We got broadcast view. Yeah. So I got a lot of comments in the comment section saying that it, I should go to broadcast here for the CPU versus CPU gameplay. And I agree with you. I, I do like broadcast more than the other view. But I remember back in the Huskies franchise last season, so NHL 22, I would go with broadcast and people said you got to go with the dynamic high you, you got to go with the the top down look the bird's eye look so i don't know it's a, it's a mixed bag it's a mixed bag but let me know in the comment section what you guys think here about broadcast view do you like this or what's your what are your uh what are your feelings and your thoughts there so seattle one of the best teams in the xhl especially on the west side they are really manning that and uh the leaders in that conference but we've got two penalties there for the nighthawks and currently up one to nothing. 
they're allowing Albuquerque to get back into this hockey game. And we got Jesse Pinkman now with a slashing call. He's very aggressive, you know. He's 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 a very angry person. So you can't do that, Jesse. Gatorade me, bitch. Yeah, yeah. I, did you get your Gatorade? Because you, you slammed it. You know, are you thirsty or not? Seattle able to kill off those penalties, but their own penalties, I should say. But they did get a power play goal by Joel La Esperance. It's a 2-0 game. And look at this goal here by Ethan Schragel. That is a beautiful goal. I was watching some Pavel Datsuk highlights the other night. And that really reminds me of a Datsuk goal. I mean, it's a short little window on net. And somehow he found a way to get it up there. And that's a nice goal. Now, you got a goal here by Tony Wolf. He's gracing our thumbnail here tonight. And 3-1 game. And Albuquerque just trying their best to get back into the game here. We got second period, five minutes left. And another great save by Ty Walker Jr., Custom goalie making some nice saves. We got some poor defense, and Robert Romero almost got a goal here, making it four to one. But we do have Spilk, Pablo Spilk. The nice pass coming from the boards. He's going to find a way to get it in, and we've got a four-one game here. Third period, 554 as Aiden Steinbrenner with a beautiful goal. I mean, that's a pretty far distance away, and he just wrist shot that thing. Most guys take slap shots from there, but he's able to f kind of finesse that in. And we've got another goal here, a rebound from Walker Jr. He can't corral it. And we've got Johnston here with the goal. Now, third period, we've got the extra attacker out, empty net, and they just can't quite get the push that they needed for that extra goal to tie the game up. And Seattle, I, dare I say that they survived? Because I, I don't know. I, I felt like they had the game pretty handedly. I think they just kind of let the foot off the gas pedal there and late in the third period. So, I don't know. Albuquerque outshot them. They did not outhit them. Faceoffs were pretty even. Penalties for Seattle. 12 minutes in the penalty box. Yet, they beat them pretty handedly. I'm, I'm going to give them that. I'm going to give Seattle that. Winning 4-1 to one late into the third period. Again, I think they just kind of let off the gas pedal there. But, all in all... Seattle pretty much dominated that game against Albuquerque. So there's your box scores just to take a look here at what everybody did in the game. Now, if you guys don't care about standings and you don't care about team statistics, so goals, assists, points, all of that, if you don't care about that, that's going to be shown here from the 12 minute mark all the way to the 18 14 mark. So if you don't care about that, go ahead and skip all the way to the 18 14 mark because, guys, I have a surprise for you. And if you're just going to go ahead and skip there, I'll see you over there. But Let's talk about the standings. We've got Seattle up top, Albuquerque in second place there in the Central Division. So that was a big matchup for both of those teams, and Albuquerque just kind of dropped the ball there. The Dakota Demons are 33-5, and five, Houston at 32-7. and seven. Kansas City kind of slipping a little bit. They're 25-10. and 10. I would have expected just a little bit more from that offense, but again, their defense kind of letting them down, losing them some games here at this point. Brooklyn, 33-4. and four. Baltimore showed out in that matchup. They beat them pretty soundly there. 27 wins for them. Tampa Bay, 33 and 6. Atlanta, right behind them, 31 and 5. And Charleston at 17 and 16. So they do have a winning record at 17 and 16, but they are objectively the worst custom team in the XHL. Pretty much everybody else, OHL level, ECHL level. They're the worst teams in the XHL as far as I'm concerned. So, I mean, it's objective. Like, these guys are going 8-28, the Kalamazoo Wings. You've got the Thunder at 10-23. and 23. So these teams will get better through free agency. Some of the things that I have planned there, relegation, we've got expansion, things like this. These teams will get better. The draft, top prospects are probably going to go to the worst teams. Like, that's just how you do a draft, right? Top down, worst teams get the first pick. That's how we'll still run it here for this franchise but or this league. And, um, yeah, we'll go from there. But statistics-wise, again, if you don't want to watch this, you want to go ahead and skip to that 18-14 mark, please feel free. But Jaleel Neal, their best player with the most points, not surprising there. And we got Regal Wood there at 16-37. and 37. Next top goaltender would have been Ryan LeBrake there at 22 goals for Atlanta, right behind Jaleel Neal. Now, goalies, I didn't show you guys goalies for Albuquerque, but I will show you the goaltenders here at the very end. So maybe it's not the 18 minute mark. Maybe it's more like the 19 minute mark. But anyway, Brooklyn, look at the amount of goals that are spread across the team. We got a lot of assists 
Do you guys notice that there? So they are spreading the love across every forward there. And I just think that that's very interesting that that's kind of the team identity out there in Baltimore. They're not selfish. They will pass the puck around and get whoever's got the best look, give that guy the shot. Kind of similar output there for Brooklyn, but a lot of assists coming from Broadway and Aston Reese. 30 and 26 for them. Chavez has got 21, so let's not forget about him. And I think that really the main thing that makes Brooklyn so strong is their goaltending. So when Borhoff gets a rest, it's Aaron Dell. I don't think he's got a lot of losses on his record. Again, we'll look at goalies numbers here in just a moment. But, of course, Borhoff has been good too in simulation. So, you know, don't count these guys out. Komarov there with 23 goals. Connolly, I believe that's 18 or 16. I should have done the math there with the points, but we're we're moving on now at this point. <laughs> Let's go skip to Houston. Take a look at Houston. Johnson Odom with 40 assists. The guy's got 48 points. He's got 40 assists. Look at the look at the point totals there for Houston. They have one of the best offenses in all of the XHL. Shepard and Kingley, 20 plus goals each. I mean, this team is is tough on offense, but their goaltending probably needs a little bit of work, if I had to guess, just because of their, their record. But take a look at Kansas City. Now, I talked about Kansas City at length here many times about their offense, and we can see just how many points that they they put up. I mean, we got Kenneth Klum there with 20 assists, and he's near kind of the halfway point of the, the team. So this offense is heavy. It's elite level. And by comparison to the rest of the league, I think that, um, you know, if they can find a goaltender, if they can get some goaltender, uh, some boost there on their team, I think that Kansas City is something to watch out for, for sure. Richmond, kind of the afterthought in the XHL. I feel like nobody really talks about Richmond, but they're not too bad. They've got some goal scorers up there, some, some nice assist numbers as well. Seattle, definitely one of the best offenses across the XHL. You've got 320 goal scorers right there with Nugmanov right there at 29, Romero 25, Peter Williams at 21, 17 there for Wolf. I mean, this team is just ridiculous offensively. They got a lot of weapons right there. Let's take a look at Dakota real quick. Got Joe Kazmir vying for that XHL MVP, in my opinion. He's got 73 points, 38 goals, 35 assists. He is their offense. Other than that, it's more of a defensive, grindy type of team with good goaltending. And yeah, they're primarily focused on big bodies and defense and enforcers. Like We've seen that in gameplay. That's, I remember that's kind of what they wanted their custom guys to be built as as well. So, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting little mix that they got out there. But uh, between Kazmir and Nugmanov, those guys are vying for XHL MVP, I think. Tucson, we'll get to them here. But I just want to mention that Tampa Bay's got a pretty good offense as well. They've got at least four people with 15-plus goals. So very well-dispersed offense right there as far as offensive talent goes. As far as Tucson is concerned, half their team has double digits in points like like what do we have here we got four people that have single digits like their offense is crazy good goaltenders Braden Holpe leading the way in wins he's 24 and 3 with three shutouts but Hammond for Tampa Bay is 19 and 4 with five shutouts let's have five shutouts here for Caden Primo and take a look at Aaron Dell by the way he's 12 and 2 Schneider outside of that very first game that we saw Seattle he is 12 and 1 so he's only lost one game we got Henderson there is 12-0 for Atlanta. And we'll keep scrolling here. We've got Dirk Davenport is 11-1 in his XHL first season. Sort by shutouts here. We got Hammond Primo. Lion Trees has got four. Deming's got four. Keegan Finch with three. So you guys kind of get the idea of what goaltenders have been good, which ones need a little bit of work, which leads me to my surprise of today's video. So guys, make sure that you leave a like, smash that like button because the surprise is coming in. A little drum roll here, please. We have got an XHL All-Star Game. Yes, sir, we've got the East versus the West. That's gonna be taking place here next Friday. So make sure you guys are tuning in here to the XHL All-Star Game. That'll be a live stream as I'm gonna reveal the All-Star rosters. These were all voted on by my XHL admin team. Basically how we went about that is I gave them the statistical rundown of every player, so the league leaders, and they basically picked their top four centers, their top four left wings, right wings, defensive players, goalies, so on and so forth. And we came up with a consensus of who should make it to the All-Star game on each side. So we got the West and the East 
taking on each other in a live stream. And you guys can see the uniforms up top there. And the roster reveal will be revealed on Friday, next Friday. So make sure you guys are tuning in. And as a little added bonus, whoever wins the XHL All-Star Game will be taking on the worst NHL team. So it's kind of, if you think about it, if this league actually happened, would the NHL ever, like, subscribe to that idea? Would they ever take the XHL up on that? Who knows? But in this world, the NHL is trying to promote the game of hockey, and they're teaming up with the XHL here to play against each other as a little friendly match. And honestly, there's only, there's no gain for the NHL to do this. If an XHL beats the NHL, we get to acquire one free agent from the NHL. So we get to spin the wheel, and one free agent from the NHL will be headed to the XHL. Who that's going to be, I have not decided quite yet. Maybe you guys can come up with something in the comment section. But I think that's kind of a cool little idea. So one NHL player, it, we can simulate a season. We can simulate like in a franchise mode. We can simulate who's going to become a free agent. And then I'll come up with like a list of players that will uh, be able to join the XHL. And from there, he'd probably have to go to the worst team. And it would probably most likely be like one of the, the worst teams like Toledo or Idaho or Wichita, something like that. So it'd be kind of funny to see how that all plays out. But I think that that'd be kind of cool just as like an added bonus if an XHL all-star team can beat the worst NHL team. So probably the Phoenix Coyotes. If we can beat them, we should earn a player. Like, I think that that would be kind of cool. So, guys, next Friday, right here on the channel, do a little 9 o'clock Eastern Time stream, and I'll see you guys right back here for the XHL All-Star Game. Leave a like if you like this thing, and I will see you in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and peace.